Well, hello and welcome back to another episode. It's great to see you all. I hope you're doing well. So this week, I just wanted to take a short break from the a series of videos we're doing on building a linear algebra library in C++. And I wanted to talk about something really quite different, in fact, different to anything that I've talked about before, but I think is perhaps quite topical at the moment. So one of the things that I'm conscious many people will be doing right now, with given the global situation, many people all over the world are looking for new jobs and things like that. And of course, that means keeping your CV or your curriculum vitae up to date. And I always think it's particularly important to have a good looking CV or as good a looking CV as possible. So one of the things that I do, even though for as far as I know at the moment, my job is not under threat, I do like to keep my uh, CV up to date. And I recently had cause to have a look at creating or trying to create a rather nice looking CV using LaTeX. Now, for those of you that don't know, LaTeX is a document typesetting um, system. It's used extensively really in the domains of uh, mathematics and particularly physics. In fact, any field really where uh, it's necessary to typeset a great many equations into a document, that's really where it's very common. But if it has uses um, across the board, it differs from word processing in that it's not it doesn't have a sort of what you see is what you get or WYSIWYG interface, which does take a bit of getting used to. So instead of writing uh, your document directly into a word processor and doing your formatting by clicking with the mouse and all of that, you actually write code, a kind of like a markup code uh, that describes the the document and also the content. Now this might seem ridiculously cumbersome at first, why would you bother to do that? Well, the simple reason is it actually produces very beautiful looking documents and it's much quicker and much easier once you learn the syntax of the, of the uh, code that you need to type to do complex maths and tables and that kind of thing. Anyway, one of the things that I wanted to do was to see if I could create a rather nice looking CV using LaTeX. So I thought, having done that, that I should make a video about it. Now this video is not intended to be an introduction to LaTeX. I'm assuming that you either have some basic knowledge of LaTeX already, or that you're prepared to go and find that out somewhere else. There are plenty of resources available on the web about how to install LaTeX and how to use it. Um, what we're going to look at today really is just how I've approached creating a basic layout um, for a document for a CV. So I will put a link in the description below to the uh, LaTeX project website where you can find out a lot more and then that has links to all sorts of resources for learning it and, and how to download it and so on. So go and check that out if you don't know it already. If on the other hand you already have LaTeX and you're already at least a little bit familiar with it then I very much hope that this video will be of use to you just as it is. Also if you're already an expert in LaTeX um, I wouldn't, although I, I mean I have used it quite a lot, but I wouldn't go as far as to call myself an expert. So do feel free to uh, drop me a line in the comments below if you think there are better ways of doing any of the things that I am going to do. I really would appreciate to hear from you. Anyway, just to quickly say, as I always do before we get into it, if you like this video, please do remember to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't have to miss any future videos. I do try and make a video roughly once a week, so if you subscribe, you don't need to worry about missing anything. Thank you very much. Right, so let's have a quick look first at what it is that we're going to create. I've got a draft of the type of CV document that I'm talking about creating. We'll look at that and then let's have a look at how we can go about actually putting together that, that document in LaTeX. So let's go. So this is what uh, I'm talking about creating. So I've roughly laid this out. Obviously, uh, you know, there's a, a nice header block here with a photograph and our name and some kind of tag for what we do. So I'm a software developer and YouTuber. Uh, Quantitative Bytes, obviously not my real name, but the name I go by on YouTube. And then I've populated this with two columns on the first page. Um, so this box here in a, a pale gray shade, which then contains my profile and a bit of text just about me and then my contact details, a list of my expertise and interests. So things that people are going to be able to, basically a list of things that people are going to want to be able to get very quickly from my CV. So especially I think including uh, three to five bullet points of my core expertise in that section. So it really means that, you know, someone looking at it, a recruiter or whatever, can look at that just at a glance and get some kind of useful information about me. 
OK, and then on the other column on the front page, we have a section for education. So uh, three different universities. For me, these dates I've just made up. They're not actual dates for me, <laughs> but it gives an example. And, and then a section for experience. Um, so obviously YouTube content creator, that's what I'm doing now, and then a full-time job that pays the bills, membership of some kind of committee, a previous job, etc., all that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to have on the first page. And notice that these columns are not evenly split down the centre. Now that was actually one of the things that I found quite a challenge to make work using LaTeX. Though it's pretty easy if you want even columns to do that, but also if you want one column like this one with a slightly grey background and then this column is obviously just white then that's a little bit different and then on the second page we can have as many pages as we like we just have a separate running header um, here which is obviously a lot smaller and then I've gone for a section that lists my skills obviously just the software development project and time management communication skills you know, whatever you want to put and then whatever sections and then of course you could do other pages if necessary if you're an academic you probably have pages and pages of publications to go after that but it'd be pretty easy uh, to populate that as you can see now the basic structure that I've created here I've created using a LaTeX package called T Color Box. Now interestingly LaTeX does come with a vast array of different packages for doing all sorts of different things and it's quite possible to spend a long time <laughs> browsing around the documentation for LaTeX and these various packages to try and find the best one to use. More often than not there's many more than one way of doing what you want and many more than one package that could support it and if you look on Stack Overflow or something like that for advice on any of these things you'll see people listing you know all sorts of different packages that they personally prefer to use to do the specific things that they want to do. Now I've approached creating this document using only two packages which are T color box and mini page. I do like to try and keep things as simple as possible so that that um, worked well for me. Okay so let's actually have a look at what this file is going to look like. Now the first thing I've already got a blank file here which I've called uh, qbcv.tech and all I'm going to do is put in necessary comments so this is qbcv.tech it's just what the file is called and we're going to define this as a uh, document class. So we define it as so we define the document class. I'll put that down on that line like that, and just save that. So we have slash document class, 11 point font, one sided A4 paper with a title page. We're not actually using that a type article. Like I said, I, I don't mean this to be an introduction to LaTeX itself. So it, it, this may not make sense to you. But if you get, as I say, go and look at the uh, LaTeX project website, um, link in the description below. There's all sorts of documentation on there. And we need to bring in the two packages that we're using. OK, so we're using, first of all, the T color box package. And most means that we bring in most of the uh, libraries that go along with that. And then we're also going to use the geometry package. Sorry, apologies. I did say, I did say that mini page was a package. It isn't. Um, the other, pa the two packages we're using are T color box and geometry. Okay. <laughs> so we'll bring in the geometry package as well, and we're going to use that to define the geometry of our page. So we obviously have A4 paper, and then we're specifying very specific custom margins of just 0 0.1 centimeters around the left, the right, the top, and the bottom. And what I was aiming for was an effect where the boxes go right up, or more or less right up to the uh, boundaries of the, of the page. And we're going to define a custom color, okay, which is going to look like that. So that is the custom, that is the green. I've just called it title back, uh, specifying the color in, form of, in terms of R, G, and B. And that is the green color that we're using. Um, we're going to specify the title although it doesn't show up anywhere title quantitative bytes and the date we don't want to display that and then of course we have slash begin oops, slash begin document and slash end document okay so all of this all of this up here this is the preamble that basically loads in the packages we want to use and sets things up and then everything between slash begin document and slash end document is of course our document um, of course if you're not familiar with LaTeX you may be familiar with things like HTML um, in which case you know you're going to see some some similarities here right so the first thing we need to do is to configure our box for uh, the top so we're going to use the slash TCB set command here and what that's going to do is define how we want our 
tea colour boxes to look. So we have the frame in grey, 95% uh, grey mixed with black, and then we have our background using, we're using the title back colour, arc of zero millimetres, arc is the uh, rounded corners, we don't want rounded corners. Okay, so then we're going to do slash begin t colour box, like so, and slash end t colour box, like that. Okay, so we're starting a t colour box environment. What I want to do, if we look back at the actual document, what that actually consists of is two separate columns. So there's one column here which contains the picture and then another column here that contains the text. The reason to do that, of course, is I want the text to be centered within this uh, region over here and not across the whole page. Um, I did mess around trying to do that with tables, but I was really unable to get that to work. So the way we do that is using mini page. OK, so we do slash begin mini page and we want a mini page at width, initially four and a half centimeters. Uh, let's do slash end mini page like that. OK, and then between here, we're going to define our page. So we are just going to do slash include graphics uh, width four centimeters circle me three dot EPS. So circle me three dot EPS, that is the image that we had, which I've converted into an encapsulated postscript or EPS file. So let's actually have a look at what that really looks like. So if we open a terminal window, we can simply compile that now. It is qbcv.tech. Um, so we just run LaTeX on that document, and that gives us a DVI. And then we just use DVI PDF, uh, qbcv.dvi qbcv to qbcv.pdf. OK. OK, so that now gives us this, um, which is beginning already to look like what we want. We have this green box uh, that spans the whole thing and we have our uh, image here. Now one thing that you'll notice the image is positioned quite far over um, to the right, which is not something that I want. I want to move it a little bit more to the left. And we're going to do that by using here, before we have slash include graphics, slash h space, for horizontal space, star, and uh, we want minus 0 0.3 centimeters, okay? OK, now we see that the picture is closer to the left hand side, which is much closer now to what we actually want. OK, so now we want to do the text Now we're going to do that as another mini page. So we have slash begin mini page like so slash end mini page like that. OK, now we want to center the text in that environment. So we're doing slash begin center and slash end center like so. OK. And then within that, we actually want our text. So I'm using slash huge to give us very large text uh, in slash text color white quantitative bytes. And then I'm putting in a slash V space star. So like slash H space star that we used before. Uh, v space stands, of course, for vertical space. It gives us a half centimeter spacing. spacing. And then we have slash large, slash large uh, text color white. And slash M will give us it italics or italic font. And we have software developer pipe YouTuber. OK, so if we save that now, and let's just have a look at what we've now got. OK, yep, I forgot to specify the width of the mini page. That is, of course, important. Uh, the mini page here is 15 centimetres wide, right? Sorry. So if we look at that now, we see now that this is really beginning to look like um, what we want. And we have, there we go, that's what we actually have there like so. It's really starting to look like what we want now. We've got our picture, and we've got our uh, main text there, which is obviously our name, and then uh, what we do. It's interesting to note LaTeX interprets the pipe as this long dash symbol, which I happen to think looks okay. Um, I particularly like the font that LaTeX uses by default, so I'm just sticking with all the default fonts. I think this is from the computer modern uh, font family, which I happen to think looks really quite nice. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want a section beneath here which is going to have um, our two columns representing, first of all, a column for our profile and in sort of immediate things that someone might want to see, and then our second column that's going to contain our additional information. So let's have a look how we go about setting that up. The first thing we're going to do is define a new TCB set, okay, like so. So we want a column frame white and column background white, and then we're going to have slash begin T color box again, 
button slash end t color box. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that I'm using actually three color boxes here. So I'm using one color box that fills the whole uh, page remaining beneath our header. And then I'm going to use two t color boxes within that to actually create the column. So let's have a look what that looks like. So the first section, so that is our main t color box. And then within that, I'm going to do slash begin mini page. Uh, Align to the top width eight centimeters. Okay, slash end mini page, like so. And within here, what we're going to do is we're going to have slash v space star. So this creates a vertical space like that of minus 0.5 centimeters. So that's going to result in shifting everything up. If I could spell space correctly, that would really help, wouldn't it? And then we're going to begin another t color box. Now it's going to copy and paste that because we then have slash begin t color box and slash end t color box. So we within our main t color box we now have a mini page and then within that mini page we have another t color box and we're using the grow to left command here grow to left by 0 0.6 centimeters that will push the left boundary of the color box towards the edge of the page and we set the background color to 25 percent gray and the frame to white okay now this is actually our uh, section where we're going to have things like our profile so we can actually just paste those in so now within here we have a slash section profile i'll just arrange those tabs a little bit okay slash section star profile so that will create a section title profile and then we have the text for that section and then we have slash section star contact and we have so within there we have our contact information oops i didn't need slash section star twice okay so slash section star contact and then we're doing a tabular environment there so we slash begin tabular and we have two columns one right centered one right aligned sorry and one left aligned and then we simply have the first entry in the first column is tail colon and tells LaTeX that we're now talking about the second column and then we have our phone number slash slash there means we go to the next line and so on for the table as you saw in the original example we then have a section for expertise I can actually put a, a line break in there just to tidy it up so then we have a section for expertise where we use the itemize environment so we have our four bullet points there slash item for the first one slash item for the second one and so on and then we have a section for our interests as well so if we save that now and let's just have a look what that looks like. There we go. We see now we're really starting to get what we had originally. So we've now created this box here with a 25% gray background. We've got our text for our profile, our text for our contact details, expertise and interests and so on. And it's really starting to look like the result that we want. So the last thing that we need to do for this page is to fill out the uh, create and fill out the box that goes over here essentially the right hand column so let's have a look at doing that now now the first thing that we're going to need to do for that then is to begin a new mini page so we do slash begin mini page like so and the width of this mini page well, it's also aligned to the top width 11 centimeters okay so we saw the first mini page i created here it's a width of eight centimeters and this one has a width of 11 centimeters so that's what i meant with them being deliberately uh, uneven so we haven't just aligned them down the center if we were just doing them aligned down the center we could just use the multi-column layout um, package uh, for latex so then we need exactly as before we need our slash v space star minus a half centimeter and then we begin our color box and end our t color box like so okay so notice this one we now do grow to right by 0 0.75 centimeters so this box here we did grow to left by 0 0.6 and this one we do grow to right by 0 0.75 and we set the column frame to white and the column background to white so that it doesn't really show up and then in that we are now going to have our sections for education and experience now i'm not going to go through and type all of those out live what I'm simply going to do is copy and paste those okay so I copy and paste those into there and let's just have a look so so we do we have slash begin mini page for our second mini page of width 11 centimeters we have slash v space star minus a half a centimeter just to push things up and then we have slash begin t color box go to right we saw that and then within that we have slash section star for education and then the items within that see how I've arranged these so I'm using uh, an itemized environment that runs from there to there and then each item I like to do it this way a slash item and then the curly brackets 
um, there and there. And then I've got the multiple lines here. So we have bold font text, yet another university slash slash means to force it to go to the next line. Otherwise, of course, it assumes that everything in your bullet point is going to be on one line. But if you use the slash slash, you can force it to push things to the next line down. And we want in italic, so we use slash emph. Um, a higher level degree and then slash emph and the year and then some text there about what that was. I always think it's a good idea to provide some extra details from at least your latest educational activities. And then so we have a number of uh, educational experiences there. And then we have uh, slash section star for experience. We do slash begin itemize and then these are laid out in exactly the same way. Okay. And there we are. So that is end that T color box and end that mini page. And then, of course, we need to end the overall color box that we've defined. So if we save that now, and let's just go and have a look. And there we go. We see now that we have the first page laid out exactly as we wanted. Now, I think that's actually really quite a powerful way of doing things. Now, as I said at the beginning, there are all sorts of LaTeX environments and packages that you can use, and I'm sure there are other ways of achieving this same result. But this is how I went about doing it, and I really just wanted to show that because I thought that you know, really might be of use to, to at least some people out there. So setting out the second page is pretty much exactly the same, but uh, let's very quickly go and just have a look at how to do that, particularly because it uses a different size header. So let's do that now. OK, so then we come to the second page. OK, so the first thing that we want, this is after the end of this color box, we want to force things to go to a new page. So we're going to do slash slash new page like that, Let's save that. And then we are simply going to create a T color box, Let's slash begin T color box. The back color is going to be equal to title back. That was the custom color that we defined. OK, and then within that we have slash text color white. So this is really very simple. We just have our name. So in my case, quantitative whites like so. OK, and then we've got slash h space star slash fill. So that will fill horizontally. OK, and then within that we want slash text color white and the text is going to be curriculum vitae, which I'm going to copy and paste to make sure that I spell it correctly and don't look too dim. <laughs> OK. OK. And slash MT color box. OK, so let's just have a look at that. That should now give us completely our uh, second page the header. Yes, there we go. It's important to make sure you get your curly brackets right. OK, so there we go. That was the first page that we've just been talking about. And then we have now the start of our second page. We have this different running header of our name, quantitative bytes, and then curriculum vitae on the right hand side. I always wonder about the value of actually writing that on a CV. Most people looking at it are bound to know what it is already, I figure. But um, it seems to be the thing to do. So we'll, we'll do that. And then very simply, we simply then define uh, different sections and things uh, like so. So we have uh, simply another T color box uh, with a background color of white, and then within that we put our section for skills. Let's just tab those out. Subsection software development, begin itemize, um, like so. Slash end itemize and slash end T color box. So because this isn't divided into columns for the second page, we just have one T color box for the header and then a separate T color box then that we just fill out for the rest of the page. And of course, we could use different colors and things like that if we wanted to. OK, let's have a look what that looks like now, if we compile that. OK, so there we go. There we see. So now we have the second page. We've uh, listed out our skills. Um, I am actually an expert MATLAB developer with more than 20 years of experience. Um, there we go. Uh, a bit of personal information about me, but not too much. Um, also experienced software developer, C++, Python, blah, blah, blah. So we can populate that with whatever we want. OK, and there we go. That was really everything that I wanted to talk about. Just a very quick overview about how I've approached creating what I think is a rather nice looking CV in LaTeX. Um, I gave a little bit of an introduction to what LaTeX is, but if you're not familiar with it, as I say, best to go and have a look at the LaTeX project homepage. There's a link in the description below. Anyway, that was it for this week, really. Just a quick short video. Next week we will, I, well, next week I will try to get back to posting the more regular content on the programming tutorials. Um, 
continuing initially with our series on linear algebra in C++. And uh, yeah, hopefully that will be of interest. Anyway, listen, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It was a great deal of pleasure making it. I do hope you'll find it useful. Please let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you like this video, please remember to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't have to miss any future videos. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.